I don't know if you can see this, but on our way down here, I just noticed that someone has written in English, bear along our trail. I don't get it. The bears have got to be all hibernating by now. Why, why would he have written bear? Let's see if we see a bear. <laughs> Good morning. It is December 22nd, and I'm here on um, New Tozan, which is a mountain in Akita Prefecture. New Tozan literally translates to uh, Nipple Mountain. When viewed from the Akita side, it's uh, called New Tozan. When viewed from Iwate, because it's sort of in between the two, it's called Eboshidake. Eboshidake refers to eboshi, a sort of a hat that the Japanese um, wore during the Heian period. You still see it with Shinto priests wearing it, the tall black hat. And so it's a pointy little peak. And today we are snowshoeing. I'm here with the mighty Sam and we're snowshoeing up to the summit. I've never done this mountain before. I'm sort of breaking my own rules a little bit in that I said, don't go up snowy mountains in the winter unless you know them really well don't know this really well. Sam's never been here either, but I downloaded a GPS map. So when we left the car, it was minus five degrees. And we'll see, well, we won't see. I'll have no idea how cold it is when we get farther away. But anyways, it's minus five degrees here now. A little brisk. Eh, balmy if you're from Wisconsin. <laughs> T-shirt weather, man. No, I'm kidding. Just reached the actual beginning of the hiking trail. We had to walk down a little road that was closed off to cars for a few hundred meters, and this is the start. Well, I'm glad there's at least some footprints ahead of us. Very quickly realized that it's a um, good idea to put on the snowshoes. There's already deep snow from the beginning. So though the tracks ahead of us, the person was just wearing long boots, I'm gonna, yeah, put on snowshoes now. So, um, we're walking on deep snow, but we're not sinking in at all. Yay for snowshoes. We may make it to the summit yet, though, as before, let me say that the goal today is uh, not necessarily the summit of the mountain, Mount Nyuto, but rather just to get back safely because this is a winter mountain. You see this marking here. So we have two things going for us. We've got footprints that we're following and two periodically someone has tied those nice red tape markers to the trees to mark the path. We go up, up, up. Nice view of Akita Komogotake over there. Minus five at the parking lot or not. It's pretty hot when you're hiking up a mountain wearing snowshoes, so already stripping off the outer layer. We reached the first marking point. We've gone 0.6 kilometers, maybe more than a half an hour, and we're on the top of a little ridge. Up here, when it flattens out, and opens up a little bit, very quickly realized that it would be incredibly easy to get lost here, even with all these markers. Without the footprints, I wouldn't have any idea where to go. It's pretty wide open here. I don't know, I don't think this would be possible without having this guy do it ahead of us, leaving tracks. I appreciate the person ahead of us. I took a risk today, coming to an unknown mountain in the snow, but so far so good. Thank you, Footprint Man. I just noticed something really interesting. See, there's this pink ribbon way up high in this tree. Um, that means that people go hiking here in the winter um, when snow is so high that that's maybe shoulder height, because that's usually the height at which they put these. So that means um, we're still early in the season. You come here in February and it would be an entirely different landscape. So that's kind of fun. Here we see some rabbit tracks. Where I come from, you see rabbits every day. They're just all over the place. It's like a rabbit, big deal. But in Japan, you don't really see them very much. So it's kind of something special if you see a wild rabbit. Same with squirrels. You hardly see any squirrels here. I mean, you trip over them in the States where I'm from in Wisconsin, but up here. Oh, a squirrel, wow. You know, you don't, you don't see much. And ahead of us, you can see, was, is using ski poles and there's no tracks coming down. So either they took a different route down or we're gonna meet him at some point. 
I'm rather curious about this titan of a person who did this in boots trudging through the deep snow. We just saw a guy going down a slightly different route, maybe 100 meters away, and so that's probably the footprint man. So we're the only ones on the mountain now since he just is behind us on the descent. I think that may be our destination and we may not make it that far because um, we're not going that fast in our snowshoes, but we'll see. Ahead of us had snowshoes. We just pulled them out here. So now the tracks become snowshoe tracks. Starting to snow. Hmm. Look at this place. What do you think, Sam? I think this is a great place to turn around. I don't know if you caught the audio on that, but um, this backstabbing betrayer who calls himself <laughs> Sam, I don't think it's really Sam, I think he's been cloned, has just said that he thinks this is a great place to turn around. <sighs> really? We will debate this and I'll get back to you. Sam wanted to turn around right here, so we have time to take a hot bath. And he's not wrong. We are, we've been going for uh, almost two hours and uh, yeah, if we want to get down in time, have a bath, and get him back home in time for his dinner plans, dinner plans, then um, it is nearly time to turn around. But I've managed to convince him to go just a little bit farther to where there is a, a cabin, a lodge. And so we're going to just go there and then turn around. Dinner plans. The summit lies before us. The summit we will not reach today, sadly. So close and yet so far. We've reached the lodge, as is the case with most of these. You gotta climb up the ladder to get in. Yeah, there's the door up there. We don't really need to go inside. So we're here at the lodge um, near the summit of Mount Nutozan, which uh, might be obscured for you by the falling snow. It took us two hours to reach the lodge on snowshoes and uh, yeah, it's just a gorgeous day. It started snowing, which probably means it's not a bad idea to go home. You don't know when the snow can get thicker and uh, kill visibility completely and make it a dangerous mountain. I guess today I'm gonna model the safe behavior of not being insistent on reaching the summit, but just uh, being safe and uh, turning around when it's time to turn around. Respecting the mountains is what we're doing today. We're marching back to take a hot bath in the hot springs. Sure feels like winter. No signs of civilization anywhere. And no one else on the mountain but us. Welcome to Iwate. Or actually, sorry, <laughs> welcome to Akita. Welcome to Tohoku. <laughs> I wouldn't call this a particularly difficult hike, except that if there's no footprints, it would be really bad. So I would say um, do not attempt this hike without uh, going with someone who's been here before. This was a kind of dumb idea for us to do it on our own. It was my dumb idea, to be honest. But because someone had just gone the same morning, uh, following the footprints made it completely viable. I don't know if you can see this, but on our way down here, I just noticed that someone has written in English, bear along our trail. This must've been the one other guy who climbed today who we saw at a distance walking back down. I don't get it. The bears have gotta be all hibernating by now. Why, why would he have written bear? I don't see any bear tracks. I wonder if he's just messing with us. Maybe he's got a sense of humor. That's a really odd thing to just write in the snow. Let's see if we see a bear. <laughs> that guy who wrote bear in English 
he, he obviously saw us as we passed him, though we were a good 50 meters away or so. Hence he wrote bear, he didn't write kuma in kanji or hiragana or something. But I, I looked around, I went off the trail uh, 10, 12 meters in both directions and I couldn't find any bear tracks, so I don't know if he was messing with us, but he's calling me a bear. Maybe he's saying I look like a bear. I don't know. Here in Akita Prefecture, there is one bear that's the same Japanese black bear, the Skinawaguma, but it um, eats people. It is, bears attack people all over Tohoku. They'll just claw them or something, maybe bite them a little bit and wander off. But the bear in Akita is not afraid of humans. It hears the bell and it rather goes for people. And it ate someone. Totally not making this up. Google it in Japanese if you can. And so whenever you're hiking in Akita, it's a little bit more um, terrifying in terms of bears. We're almost back. We're back down safe. It took us uh, three hours and eight minutes, including some breaks to eat and fly the drone around. So in about three hours, we went up to the lodge, not to the summit and back down again. I think we could have probably gone to the summit and still made it back in time for his dinner date, but better safe than sorry. Can't be late for dinner dates. And now we have time to take a bath in hot springs. Thank you so much for watching. This is Quinlan from Go North Japan, and I'll see you on the trails.